Hello, everyone. This is Marshall Gittler speaking. I'm head of investment research here at BD Swiss, bringing you the daily market preview. Now, today, today's main events are uh, first off the UK CPI, the inflation data. That's from Britain. It's likely to show inflation is stable below the Bank of England's target. I don't think this is going to be a big concern for the Bank of England right now. I think this is neutral for sterling. When the US opens up, we've got housing starts and permits coming out. They should show a pretty strong housing market. That's going to likely to be positive for the dollar. US producer prices are also coming out. Uh, they're going to move up a bit, which is another positive for the dollar. From Canada, we also have inflation data coming out from there. Uh, it's going to show inflation stable. That should have no impact on the Canadian dollar. Later in the day in the US, we've got the minutes of the January FOMC meeting. Uh, these will be interesting. The market will read them very closely, but probably they'll have no big currency implication because we've heard so much from Fed Chair Powell recently. I don't expect anything market moving particularly from, from these uh, the, the minutes. Finally, overnight, we have the Australian employment data coming out. It's like it's forecast to be a bit weaker, but not significantly. Mostly it will stay in the recent range. That should be neutral for the Australian dollar. Now, just in more detail, uh, the UK CPI, as I said, it's supposed to show, uh, well, some small acceleration at the headline level because of higher energy costs but uh, core CPI only up a bit. Uh, and um, both, of, both of them well below the, uh, both of them well below the Bank of England's 2% inflation target, uh, but also within the Monetary Policy Committee's 1% to 3% range of tolerance. So with no big change there, I don't think inflation is really a major concern for the Monetary Policy Committee right now. I think they're much more concerned with growth and so something like Friday's purchasing managers indices will probably be more important for the Bank of England. Therefore, also more important for sterling. I expect these figures to be neutral for the pound. In the US, we're looking for uh, well, a fall in housing starts uh, from the incredible surge we had the previous month, but a rise in permits. Starts are being in, uh, affected by unseasonably warm weather, which is what caused the big surge last month. I think permits are a better indication of the housing market, and they're a forecast to go, come back up almost to the uh, high that, was, that we've seen for this economic cycle. So it's clear that lower interest rates are still feeding through it to the housing market. That's good for the US economy. That's good for the dollar. Similarly, the producer price index is expected to edge up a notch, uh, although still remain below 2%. I think this, these signs of higher upstream inflation will also be, or ought to be, also good for the dollar. Meanwhile, as long as I'm talking about uh, the US, let's talk about the minutes of the January FOMC meeting for a minute. As I said, we got two days of grilling Fed Chair Powell in the House and the Senate recently. I don't expect to see much more information about the outlook for policy from that. Uh, there are just two points that uh, I think that I'll be looking for and perhaps other pe people. First off is some more details about the Fed's policy review. Uh, while the Fed, uh, the committee did was unanimous in declaring the current state of policy appropriate, Powell noted in his press conference after the meeting that under a different policy framework, uh, the conclusion could be different. We'll, you know, they're reviewing this framework, and there could be some change in how they set policy in the in the future. We'll be looking for any more details about these alternative ways of managing monetary policy, and which way the committee is leaning. Secondly, there could be some information about the Fed staff's insights into the economic impact of the coronavirus. I don't think they know that much more than uh, anybody else does. It will be interesting what to see what they said. This meeting took place on January 29th, so already this was a big topic of, of a conversation. Canadian consumer prices can be described in three words, boring, boring, and boring. 
uh, the while the year-on-year -year rate, the headline rate does move around a lot, the Bank of Canada focuses on these three core measures. All three of them are expected to be show inflation at exactly the same rate as in the previous month. Moreover, they're all within a whisker of the Bank of Canada's 2% target. It's, it's uh, going to be a no, no non-issue for the Canadian dollar, I think. Finally, uh, the Australian employment data is not a non-issue. In fact, employment is now the major thing that the, bank, that the Reserve Bank of Australia is focusing on now. So these, these employment data are very important for the Aussie. They're expected to show the rise in jobs uh, to be pretty, well, not so great, only about half of the recent trend, but still positive. And they're expected to show the unemployment rate ticking up a bit, but still remaining within the recent range. Uh, net, net, I think they're not great, but they're not a disaster either. I think they'll probably be seen as having no impact at this point on the, the RBA's policy and therefore not much impact on the Aussie either. Well, this is Marshall Gittler, head of investment research at BD Swiss. Thank you very much for listening. And remember, BD Swiss gives you more than trading.